of spruce. Fortunately for me, it's only a 40 minute drive, uh, which is uh, super nice to have access to, uh, to that. Um, uh, I remember the last time I did this, I shipped a lot of things in and with today's freight rates, I can only imagine how expensive that can get having to ship some of this stuff. Um, so I got, I got the, ma the mahogany for my fuselage. So uh, I estimated four sheets of uh, two by eight. And uh, I already had a little bit here from uh, when I was working on the wing here, I had a little bit of mahogany, but I needed, uh, I needed more to finish that up so I went and grabbed that and then uh, I also picked up a few other things um, that I needed and I will show you those here the first one is uh, more T88 and uh, I will tell you that I am uh, just about maybe maybe a quarter left of completing uh getting through two quarts of that so this is my third my third quart so i guess you can kind of make an assumption that the wings almost take two quarts uh of a t88 to complete and uh i picked up uh i picked up some uh some uh nut plates um, they're just uh, AN366F428A, uh, which is a quarter 28 uh, nut plate. And those, um, because of the suggestion of one of you, um, I hadn't thought about the fact that I will definitely be putting a camera in multiple locations on my plane. Um, it would just wouldn't be right if I didn't. So, so I'm going to add a little bit of quarter inch wood blocking um, out here in the toward the tip of the uh, of the wing, and I'll put those uh, nut plates um, on the back side um, before I put those in, and then I'll I'll just have a small uh, quarter inch hole on the top side of the wing. So I'm thinking I'm going to put one on the fuselage, probably up back behind the uh, uh, somewhere. More than likely, it'll be mounted on on top of the. Uh, uh, the headrest and I might pick another location maybe a little further back uh, back by the tail somewhere so I'm gonna try and pick four locations to put those um, obviously mounting one to the underside to a struts easy um, but that's not as fun as putting them on the top side but anyway enough of that um, and then I got some filler I was reading about this uh, lightweight um, non-clogging lightweight filler which basically works like Bondo um, but uh, it's supposed to be a whole lot better it doesn't clog up the sandpaper and all that I just have uh, there will be a couple of spots in the aileron seams and a couple spots in the uh, uh, leading edge seams on the wing where I just have to do a little bit of filling and then I think I have I might have just a couple of very small voids like right in there once I trim this plywood off there'll be just a small void maybe right there where I'll be using a little bit of this so um, so I got that and uh, and then I needed a uh, I needed an AN bolt gauge um, because uh, I've got my organizer in my toolbox but sometimes I, I pull bolts out and then I Put them back in and i don't know if i get them in the right place or not but this will uh is a real quick handy very inexpensive um bolt gauge even tells you on the back what everything means that's uh on the head of those so that was my that was my trip today and uh and so what i'm going to do tonight um is i'm going to work on uh, I want to get all these staples pulled out of what I did last time. So I'm going to pull these staples and these staples. Um, then I've got some routing to do. I've got to route, uh, take the flush bit router, route this, 
We're out the wing uh, leading edge on the tips. Um, I have the fuel tank um, area um, to route um, just just on the uh, on this part on the other side, of course. But uh, so I'll do that, and uh, then I might use some of that filler in a couple spots, and I will be uh, uh, I'll see what else I what else I can get into. But that would be I'd feel pretty good about getting through that tonight. So. All right, cool. Well, I'll get uh, set up here and I see my, I knew my battery. I have plenty of batteries, but I knew this one wasn't gonna last long. I see it's already telling me we're almost done. So I will uh, just get set up, change the battery, and I'll see you in a minute. So I finished uh, finished up that part, and now I need to uh, I need to get this center center aileron bearing in place uh, so that I can test fit this aileron and see how uh, what kind of clearance what kind of clearance we have. So uh, I'm just getting these bolts in here. Some, uh, um, these are AN3-7A. Um, this is the outboard section of the wing. So everything is marked for outboard. Even the bracket has LO on it, left outboard. Um, washers go on the inside like everything else practically on this plane. Actually, I don't think there's a bolt that's not like this. has a nylon insert. And of course, uh, I've had to swap out a number of bolts because I couldn't get two threads uh, showing on the uh, outside, which is what's required. You need at least two threads when the bolt's tight on the back side of the nylon uh, 
a nylon nut and so uh, I had to swap out some of those which means maybe my you know my quarter inch might be just slightly off but still I don't think it would be quite that far at that point at that point you do what you have to do so um, when I'm first when I'm first working with this I mentioned this once before I like to work with small hand tools that way I can't I can't risk uh, kind of over tightening things and crushing any wood uh, I get a better feel for uh, kind of when things are getting tight so I like to start there and uh, so that's works out best I could go at it with a small ratchet probably but I'm patient enough to do it with two wrenches at least where I can reach uh, there might be some locations where that's not possible yeah. so now the A and 7A actually works out great because I have at least three I have at least three um, threads showing here on the back side so You can't really properly test fit the aileron because it sags a little bit in the middle when it doesn't have this center support, so you really have to get it in place before you can get a true reading on is anything going to rub on here or here. <coughs> Excuse me there. So get these tight. So that's good for now. Solid. <clears throat> and I've got the other two. I've got the left tip. I'll get that in place. <laughs> and the, I'll get the left root first, and then I'll then I'll go to the tip. All right. So I had to get the uh, I had to get this slot cut in the uh, leading edge sheeting so it could be uh, uh, ready to slip on here and it was pretty easy uh, I used the uh, I'd already worked out how long it is and everything on the other wing so I just had a piece of paper that I wrapped around here and was able to make able to make these two end marks and that allowed me to know kind of what range I needed my slot so uh, got that in place so now uh, I'm gonna give it a fit all right and this is pretty typical for how you how you uh, take off how you put on and take off a mini max aileron um, you see at the root I have the uh, the bearing bracket is already on here so you can see it's right there and then here's the center bracket and what'll happen is I'll take the aileron, I will, I will put it into the root bracket and then uh, slip it onto the center one. And then when I get here, I'll put the bracket on and it'll slip over the, uh, the bearing and the uh, head of the bolt on this end. So, all right, let's hope that we have decent clearance um, so we don't have to do a bunch of sanding. That would be I guess it'd be a little strange if I didn't have any sanding to do.
So at the extreme, here a little bit. And what's important here is not only not only do I need the clearance, but I have to have the uh, I have to have the clearance um, for the fabric as well. So I'm not just looking for this to clear; I'm looking for everything to clear. You can see this one and this one. Now it's important that I don't uh, I don't route this yet because uh, as you can see uh, you might not be able to see it but it's flush here with the edge but in the middle because of the layback um, it's actually uh, sticks over but I need this straight edge in order to get this routed out at the correct uh, distance so um, so I don't want to make a, the mistake of jumping ahead and doing this before I get this routed out here which is actually for the tank area, um, you can see my three-quarter inch, three-quarter inch, three-quarter inch reveal. I've got to get the same uh, three-quarter inch reveal in this piece here. So, and I'll show that to you uh, in a minute here. As soon as I get this section right here taken care of, I just cut that ahead of time so I know where to stop and I don't hit these with my router. Um, so. That's important.
Great, so I just gotta get this laid out here um, where my lines are. And uh, so that's gonna be right here. And then it's going to obviously be right there. And then I have to come over three quarters of an inch. That's what I'm going to take out. So that's right there. this section right here and I'm gonna set my I gotta switch router bits to <clears throat> to a uh, not the uh, flush cut router bit but the, uh, the regular one and I'll go make that switch and then I'll get the uh, I'll get the bracket on here that actually uh, allows me to set this distance off of this edge here off of this edge to get this routed We'll set that other bit for a sixteenth of an inch depth, and then we'll come in here and uh, take this piece out. Okay, so I've got my depth set, and I've got my, uh, uh, I'm, this came with the uh, router, but I modified it um, so that I could um, use it for this purpose that I've got going on here. So, and I, that was just really just kind of adding that block of wood, and I had to remove some of this so I can get as close as possible to this um, and then it leaves a section uh, it leaves a little section out toward the front there that I have to uh, I have to take out um, a little bit differently so uh, yeah <clears throat> So first I'm going to check the depth real quick and I'll just kind of drop the bit in and I'll see, uh, make sure that we're not, uh, we're not too deep or too shallow. Plugging it in would help. show you that uh, you can see that actually we are uh, a bit on the uh, shallow side it didn't make it through the last layer of the plywood so I'll get that just a little bit
I'm not sure if you saw what happened there or not. Uh, I accidentally pulled my router away from the edge and it uh, it actually took a little a little detour right there. So all I'm doing is uh, I'm going back in here and uh, just filling this with uh, some plywood real quick and some, some quick CA. And then uh, then I'll actually take a uh, there's a little bit of a hole right here. So I'm just going to take some sawdust, fill that hole. Just let that smoke off. All right, so that's it for me today, and I want to thank you for checking out the video. Um, welcome to all the new subscribers, and uh, I hope you're uh, hope you're enjoying this. And I wanted to just give you a little update. Um, uh, after today, I'm right around 250 hours into this, and I've uh, uh, just spent right at two thousand um, dollars. But now I have, after buying the plywood today for the fuselage, I actually have, um, I have every, uh, everything I need from a uh, airframe, from a wood part of the airframe. <laughs> I've got all the lumber I need to finish. So, um, and I think this uh, last court of uh, T88 will take me pretty far after I've got that little bit of uh, maybe a quarter of the last court left to go and uh, yeah so um, yeah so uh, I hope you're all well and I will catch you later